yes. It is nice to come to Wyoming where it's nice and calm because in New Jersey it's honk honk and hurry up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so the nice calm atmosphere, I'm like, wow, this might be the place when I retire. I might be coming here. <laughs> so at the age of five, I had um, a virus and I had a uh, ear infection. And the, my mother heard a gurgling sound in the other room. I was turning blue and I was in a grand mal seizure. She came into the room and she saw me turning blue. She immediately called the ambulance. And they rushed me to the hospital, and they found that the virus I had had traveled to my brain, and it was it turned into encephalitis. I was induced into a coma, and they told my parents that I most likely would become paraplegic, or I probably would have brain damage. I, and my father came from Greece. He came from a very small island where everybody knew everybody, and there was one church on the island, and there, he told me that there was a statue in the front, and tears used to roll down its eyes. So he was praying to that statue, and he was praying that I would be okay. And when he looked up, I had teardrops all from my eyes. And I woke up, and the first thing I asked for was McDonald's French fries. And, <laughs> and I wasn't aware of what was going on, but um, I, didn't, I wasn't paraplegic, and I didn't have brain damage, but I did have epilepsy. So life was truly a, an obstacle ride for me. You know, I had lots of challenges, just like everybody in this room did. And um, you know, facing obstacles can be, you know, it, it could be a little devastating. It can be frustrating. And at times, you know, we all feel sometimes we just want to give up because sometimes we move three steps forward and we feel like we get knocked back two steps. And yeah. I walked out of there with my head up high. I wasn't going to let it get me down. And I said, I don't know what my next step is in life, but there's something out there for me, and I'm going to find it. These people, and then all of a sudden, and an herbalist came, and he said, "You know, I need a lot of research on natural healing." And he says, "Can you do this for me?" And he gave me a lot of medical uh, work, and I had to write it so people like us could understand it. And so I did a lot of research and writing. I said, "Wow, a lot of these natural, holistic things could actually apply to me, and it can apply to a lot of other people." So I started to apply holistic living to my life. I started to, I was taking my medicines and I, I was changing my lifestyle. And my seizures went from 12 to 9 to 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, to being controlled. So I got very inspired by this. And, you know, those, those letters I got, I, you know, by, by applying holistic living with my medications, by changing my lifestyle, I was able to actually control my seizures. So I took those letters of inspiration because if, if people didn't come out of the woodwork to help me, I would not be where I am today. And I really appreciated other people helping me. So I wanted to give back. So I created a book. The, it was called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone, with those letters and a regimen, how to control epilepsy. And then I started to do more research on natural healing. And it took me about five or six years, and I wrote a book called The Complete Herbal Guide. And I taught people how to holistically improve their health. And now I'm not saying that holistic living is going to take away our obstacles and our, and, and our disorder, but it could help us. We can overcome the obstacles in life. We may not be perfect, but think about it. Who in life is perfect? You know, that word should not even be a vocabulary word. No one. no one, exactly. No one. That word shouldn't be in a dictionary. Because everyone has something.